Hello everyone, this week we are going to learn how to create this sunny painting in watercolors. Hello everyone, thanks for joining my home studio where I share my passion for watercolor painting. This week we are going to learn how to create this sunny painting in watercolors. I'll guide you through the process from start to finish. In the beginning, we will learn how to sketch and create a composition to tell a story of this urban street. And there's one prominent element in creating any kind of sunny painting is to create a contrast between a lighting and shadows. So in this video, I'll guide you through the process of how to layer this light and shadows slowly to get the desired result. I do upload every Saturday of a watercolor painting from start to finish. And this does require time and effort. If you want to support me, hit the subscribe button so you guys can get weekly video uploads from our channel. And please do share with your fellow artists, friends and family. And uh, let's get started guys. Before um, we start painting, there is one step that is crucial to take and um, every beginner or even every artist should take is to analyze our reference and look for our designing and composition. So designing our composition is really important because, because it helps us to um, uh, composite and design our painting in a such a way that it's telling a story and in a way that we also creating an impactful story as well and you can also see I'm also constantly uh, checking um, my angles with the reference and making sure the angles uh, match perfectly um, for the perspective and what I did is I um, the foreground uh, the foreground uh, if you see the foreground space there is uh, mostly the foreground space is um, accommodating in our reference so literally what I did is I tried to zoom in so that the streetcar um, takes a lot of the foreground and I also disregard the figure uh, because they're also overlapping on the streetcar by itself so it also creates a tangent. And I also move things around so that um, I can have 80% on the 80% uh, of the elements on the right hand side left hand side and only 20% on the right hand side. So I'm going to do the first wash. Uh, for the first wash, I'm using cerulean blue. Uh, when I do um, uh, uh, sky, I try to uh, think that um, as a flat single color as possible. And you can also see I'm leaving some white bits here and there um, for the street car, um, the street, uh, the street pole, as well as for the street signs, uh, which is at the bottom of it. And uh, this is kind of really difficult. Um, we would have done. Uh, a darker um, uh, darker wash um, for the street poles but I didn't do it so since I have that um, a light wash um, so I brought it in um, at the bottom so now I'm doing the foreground uh, for the foreground I'm using a little bit of warmth in it um, so the easiest way to create warmth in our wash is using yellow ochre or amber so in a way that um, it creates a glow uh, but as it comes to the foreground I'm going to um, increase my pigment consistency and make it a little bit darker so it's going to act as a lead in for us so next um, i'm going to be working on the buildings which is on the left hand side and as i said um, in the beginning of the video that uh, most of my elements will be on the left hand side only 20 percent will be on the right hand side and you can see that um, i also zoomed in i also added another figure in the foreground in the shadow so it also acts as a really nice interesting element so when I do the first wash for my reference, um, I will see my local color. So local color is, if you see the roof of that reference, it's a warmish color. So I'm going to add that. And for the background, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to apply a warmer wash and just blend in with it uh, in the background. And I'm doing the first wash, making sure that leaving some eyelets for the street poles on the other side as well. And it also going around the street car, I'm making sure of it. And there's also a darker roof. And it does look darker now, but in watercolors, uh, the washes go dull. So I'm making sure to get that wash um, as fast as possible. And you can also see that um, I'm also spinning really fast. Um, this is just to expedite the process and not to just uh, telling each and everything um, what I'm doing. And I'm trying to add the bottom part of the buildings, um, which are uh, uh, on the mid ground. And I'm also leaving some white bits for the uh, for the cars which is in the uh, midground and for the building for the midground building I usually don't spend that much time I usually think about the shape and what shape is it it's a rectangle and what color is it and that's it so now I'm adding the car in the midground and I added this car um, because it's an interesting element because um, if uh, Toronto uh, the cab drivers have this car uh, which has a really nice orange and a little bit of green in it 
and I'm trying to add it and um, uh, being said that I also did over this over did this car for a first wash so let's add some figures um, I usually use cadmium red with a little bit of yellow ochre or cadmium yellow and I'll try to put their um, faces um, and legs arms and whatever I can so I also know that where the figures are and this also helps as a roadmap for me once I render other stuff now I moved on to the street light uh, the street lights the same thing I'm thinking the local color the local color is uh, cadmium red and a little bit of little uh, tinge of orange in it and I'll just add that now I'm using a wet on wet principle on it so that it's kind of blends and create this gradient from top to bottom and I'll do the same thing um, since I have something on my brush so I'll do the same thing on the uh, right hand side uh, which is in the foreground as, as well so when you do the first wash or the base color, the local color, uh, local color for it and think everything as one single wash, don't think about lighting or shadows yet. Uh, because once you do the wash, think about the first wash is kind of the lighting you're adding, then we can add the darker value on top of it. And um, this is our um, street sign and uh, making sure to get it um, as dark as possible. It does look a little bit darker and the color will go a little bit dull and that's how watercolor does. The one more thing I realized that um, when I did this painting on a rough watercolor paper, it didn't blend and it doesn't give the color uh, what I was desiring. Because when I do this painting in a cold watercolor, uh, Saunders uh, cold press watercolor paper, it does give the accurate local colors for me. And this kind of goes a little bit vibrant on a rough watercolor paper. So now I'm creating the tree and I'm seeing the shape of the tree and I'm quickly blocking it in. And as soon as I apply the wash, before it dries out, I'm going to um, add a darker wash wherever uh, where I see the shadows. So the easiest way to see the shadows and think everything shape is to squint your eyes. So when you squint your eyes, it will give the shape of it. And then you can go from there. So now I'm going to add the shadows for the background building. And you can see as soon as we add the shadows, um, uh, the lighting started appearing in our scene. And it's also creating a really nice contrast for our um, scene as well. And again, when I paint background and uh, when I paint uh, mid-ground and background buildings, I make sure that I don't spend that much time on it. Whereas if i painting a foreground building, I make sure that I spend a lot of time on it. And there's also a lot of shadows, so, which is um, um, casting on the mid-ground buildings. I try to add that. And I also added a... Uh, a car or which is close to our car so it also looks really good so i didn't do uh, the street car yet so i'm going to be focusing on the street car and um, i'll start with the red part and uh, because the white parts i'm going to leave it as it is i'll all uh, maybe i'll add a little bit of warmish tone on it and um, as i said um, i'm using a rough watercolor paper and it doesn't um, blend as it desired but um, i don't want to stop my painting but i just keep on going till i am happy with my painting and i'm working on the pole now uh, which is in the mid ground and now i'm doing the and the glasses uh, the windows for the street car and you can see that whenever i paint i layer it slowly i don't rush it i make sure that I am uh, doing with the lightest wash as possible and I can slowly increase the uh, uh, the value consistency because if you go darker uh, we can go lighter we can go lighter by um, uh, uh, putting some water and using uh, tissue paper to get it off it but I don't want to do that that's why I usually start with the lightest wash and I slowly build up so now I'm focusing on the street poles and uh, which is on the right hand side and you can see as soon as we add those um, the, street, um, the street poles, um, it also provides really nice scale for painting as well. And there's also a figure um, who is standing in front of it. I make sure to capture it. And now I'm adding the um, dresses for the figures. I know that um, where the figure, uh, figures are sitting now, so I want to make sure that I can combine everything and create the dress for everything else. And I'm also adding the uh, little bit of a darker tone uh, for the car uh, for the car windows. And you can see, as soon as I added the uh, street poles, um, uh, things started coming alive. So now I'm going to add the shadows for the foreground buildings. And you can see, as soon as I add the shadows on the left hand side, you can see a light started appearing on our uh, um, on our painting. So this is when you have to um, keep in mind um, when you do watercolors, uh, you paint the light first and then you add the shadows. 
then you can go uh, darker shadow or um, a lighter shadows uh, and you can slowly build up and you can see as soon as i start adding the shadows and um, uh, the dimensions of the foreground building comes alive so i'm doing the second wash uh, for the street car and i'm trying to slowly build up the value and as I said um, in, in the beginning, um, the rough watercolor paper doesn't accept the uh, painting as good as a water, uh, cold uh, watercolor paper because the colors go a little bit dull. But um, I don't want to complain it, but I just want to make sure that I'm going to get a good painting because um, I kept going out of faith that I can create a good painting even with a little bit of uh, uh, a mediocre watercolor paper. And you can see I'm adding the darker shadows and you can see that how I layered the darker shadows on top of that uh, uh, streetcar windows. And now I'm adding the foreground figure and now I'm going to add the shadows and I'll start with the four, uh, mid ground shadows. And you can see as soon as we add the mid ground shadows, um, uh, it kind of created the lights are appearing on a scene and I'm going to add the foreground shadows. And I'm going to blend the foreground figure um, on the foreground shadow by itself. I'm also giving him a hat. And I'm making sure since he is on the in the shadow, I made his uh, face a little bit darker. So now I'm trying to add the, a little bit of details for the figures, and now I'm going to add the details um, for the street lights. And I'm going to add some um, darker pigments um, for the uh, street light as well. And uh, before um, earlier in my work, um, I don't spend that much time on uh, creating. Um, um, I don't put that many details on it, but uh, nowadays in my work, um, I'm kind of putting a little bit of details and trying to render things accurate because I want to uh, my uh, painting to look a little bit realistic as well as have these impressions. And um, even though it looks painterly, but yet I want to uh, my painting to look realistic. And now I'm going to use the street wires. Uh, so the street wires, I'm using my calligraphy brush and because it gives really thin lines, uh, like a laser sharp. And this also helps to create a scale because when you see the, um, uh, when I see a lot of um, watercolor, uh, beginner watercolors or people who are doing watercolors, they make the street wires really thick and it just goes, it just like makes your painting goes out of scale. So it is, res uh, it is really necessary when you paint street wires or something really, um, then make sure try to capture it and it provides a really nice scale to your painting and it also show authenticity in your painting because when you paint you don't just paint and you're also studying your reference as well and whenever I paint I, I also keep in mind that uh, whenever I paint I'm also studying my reference as well so next time when I paint I know that the street wire is a little bit thin it's not thicker as I was thinking so now I'm going to add the, another detail for the street wires and I'm adding a couple of details um, for the street poles and I'm also adding in darker bits and now I'm also adding a shadow. There's also a little bit of shadow casting on the uh, reference. Uh, you cannot see it. If you zoom it, you can see it. So I'm just trying to add this um, shadows on the uh, street car. So I usually like make sometimes shadows like this because it also helps to show the form of the street car how rounded uh, how round it is. So now I'm going to use white paint and uh, this is just to bring back some of the eyelets which I couldn't able to um, leave it when I was painting it. And um, I wait for this step till the end and uh, I'm using Chinese white out of the tube. You can also use gouache which is like more opaque than this. And you can see that um, I also um, left some uh, uh, the door windows for the streetcar. So I'm just going and glazing over another darker value on top of it. As you can see, as soon as we add the darker value, um, there's a lot of forms and a lot of depth started happening, uh, happening in our um, streetcar. So now I went back to my um, white paint and I'm trying to capture the street sign. And I don't render as it is. I'll just um, make sure it looks close to it and when people see it, they try to put their own lettering on the street sign. So when I show this painting to someone who lives in Toronto, so they put their own um, uh, street signs on top of it. And there's also this little bit of white wire, so which is on the left hand side and I do it on the darker area so it just creates a little bit of depth. And I'm also creating some of this uh, white signs um, on the streetcar as well. And there's also a TTC logo, which is red. I'm trying to add that. And I also left some 
a darker uh, darker shadow um, a darker uh, value on my um, street car so this is how our final painting looks like and um, we layered it slowly with our first wash then the second wash then we add the shadows to create depth and lighting and shadows um, in our painting so now it's your turn um, take your own reference or my reference and um, use the principles of what i showed in this video and try to apply in your painting and let's see what you can come up with thanks again for watching this video let me know what you guys think of this video in the comment section below uh, if you have any other subjects you want me to cover in watercolors uh, write me at watercolorimpressions at gmail.com or comment them below before you go, hit the subscribe button so you guys can get weekly video uploads from our channel. And uh, good luck with your painting, folks.